So good evening and welcome to the Law School Application Process Essentials Personal Statements webinar. I'm Nicole Vilches, Assistant Dean for Admissions at Chicago Kent College of Law. This evening's webinar is designed to provide you with information about how to create a strong personal statement. We'll also have time for you to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Our guest presenter is Karen Buttenbaum, partner at Spivey Consulting. Karen's a respected law school admissions professional with over 16 years of experience working in legal education. From 2001 to 2013, she was a voting member of the admissions committee at Harvard Law School, reading and making decisions on over 16,000 applications and interviewing over 1,000 applicants during that time. So Karen, thank you for joining us this evening and I will turn things over to you uh, to start the presentation. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to talk to you about uh, the about law school um, admissions and, and personal statements, which is a lot of what I do these days. Um, I'm no longer working on the admission side of things in a, in a law school, but we I work directly with clients who are applying to law school. So um, this is what we do. Uh, we talk to, to our um, our uh, our clients about applying to law school and personal statements. So, um, can I, do I have access to the slides? Oh, yep. there we go. <laughs> so, Great. we're talking about the personal statement, uh, why it matters in a nutshell. It really does matter because this is your opportunity to show the reader something that you can't, that they can't get from other parts of your application. Um, they have a lot of information in when they're looking at an application. So, when I was reading files, it's important to, to understand that the personal statement isn't just read in a vacuum. It is read in conjunction with the rest of your application. So we have your transcripts, your resume, we know what your recommenders are saying about you, and all the other information that you've filled out on the application form. So the personal statement really is your opportunity to tell the reader something about you uh, that isn't evident from somewhere else in the application. So, there are many different types of statements. Uh, there are the good and the bad. And the topic that you choose really does matter uh, which category this is going to go into. And I think, you know, one of the, the easiest ways to start talking about what's a good personal statement and what's a bad personal statement is to talk about what not to do. Um, back. Um, how do I go back? No. So what makes the bad the bad? Um, so some people will write with the wrong audience in mind, uh, thinking about who is going to be reading your application. Know that it is it's it's going to be people in the admissions office who want to understand that you are applying to an academic program. This is an academic exercise, so it's not necessarily a, an exercise in creative writing. Although your personality should, throw, sh should show through in your personal statement, the audience is going to be uh, evaluating your application for a few things, for whether or not you can compete in this academic program, so whether or not this is going to be um, a good fit for you academically, but also is this somebody that we want as a member of our community? So you have to remember who's reading your application. It's also a stranger. It's somebody you don't know. So you have to let them get to know you through your, your personal statement. Um, the poor judgment shows through sometimes in the choice of topic or tone. Um, the tone is important because a lot of times personal statements are meant to show how you overcame a challenge or how you persevered through something difficult. So it's okay to choose a topic on those areas. In fact, that makes a lot of sense for most people, but what matters most is how you present it and the tone. So if you overcame something that was really challenging, try to look at the positive. Um, one of the things I've always said is don't invite everyone to your pity party. So if there is um, something that you want to talk about, just check for the tone to make sure that it does um, it, that that it, it really resonates with a positive message. Um, of course, this is, should be a polished piece of writing. So it's not something that, uh, that should be just done in one draft. You should look at it and refine it over time. Um, most importantly, 
follow the directions of the school to which you're applying. Every law school has their own instructions and their own prompt for personal statements. There are a majority of them will ask something very general and broad, like tell us a little bit about yourself. They'll use more refined language than that. Um, but that is a general prompt for a lot of schools. We'll just give you a very basic um, instructions. However, there are some schools that really ask very specific questions. So please pay attention to what each individual school is asking. This also comes into play in terms of the length of the personal statement. Sometimes people would like, um, you know, sometimes schools ask for a word limit or say, you know, keep it to two pages. Um, and if you, in some schools, if you go over a little bit, it's not a big deal, but if some schools, they ask for two pages and they want two pages. Or if they ask for two pages and you send in six, that's clearly not following direction. So some of the top ten mistakes, the top mistakes that, uh, that people make in terms of, you know, writing a personal statement, um, not proofreading it carefully, uh, restating your resume and paragraph form. It's perfectly fine to talk about experiences, to talk about things that are on your resume, but you need to talk about what you learned from them, how you grew, what that experience taught you, not just a list of, I did this, I did that. Um, this, this one about talking about yourself, about, about uh, somebody else more than yourself, you can always talk about how somebody has influenced you in some way. Um, that's a, a great topic sometimes, and how somebody helped you grow or learn or change your perspective on something. But I do remember reading a personal statement once that at the end of the personal statement, I wanted to admit the applicant's brother rather than him. So you got to be careful um, not to really talk so much about somebody else and, and not about how it affected you. Um, trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. Um, you don't have to write about struggle if you've never experienced struggle, so just keep that in mind. Um, it is okay to write about something small, but it does have to be meaningful, both to you and to the person reading the application that needs to make sense. Um, so thinking about the essay, thinking that the essay needs to be all about why law or why a certain law school, unless the instructions state it, you don't have to talk all about why you know, your journey to law school. Remember, I said in the beginning that as a whole, your application needs to make sense. So if, for example, you uh, have been working in a completely unrelated field, let's say you've been um, an artist uh, for six years after graduating with an art degree, um, and there's nothing on your resume or anywhere that talks about law school. In that case, it might make sense for you to at least address the reason why you want to go to law school. Um, but if you have been a paralegal, or if you've been a legal assistant, or you are a political science major who really has done all of your, your research and, and your work at law firms or um, and, you know government state agencies or something along those lines, it, it's less important to talk about why law. You certainly can. But just remember that this is a piece of the puzzle. A personal statement is just one element among many that the schools will be looking at. Um, so it doesn't always have to be about why law, but it can be if that makes sense. Um, focus, focusing too much on your career plans, and the reason that is not something that you necessarily should do all the time is because um, it's too much about the future, and it's not about how you got to where you are. So. At this point, the future hasn't happened yet, obviously, um, but you really want to talk about how you got to where you are and not necessarily about where you want to go. You can talk about it, but it shouldn't take too much of the, the, um, of the space in your personal statement. Um, so if everything, if, you know, declaring love for one area of law without knowing anything about it, I think a lot of people uh, hear about, uh, you know, intellectual property or uh, patent law or something along those lines where they really have no background in that area and just think it could be cool to go into that direction. Um, it, it does require a certain amount of preparation for those careers, so um, understanding that before declaring your love for the, the area of law is a good idea. Um, you know, this goes to just 
making sure that you have a well-written piece, you know, using the same word over and over again. Um, I think over the years, anyone who has read, read applications uh, has a list of words that they can't stand anymore. <laughs> um, by the way, the top of my list is always every year the word hone or any form of that. I recognize that that is something that is uh, personal, <laughs> but I really don't like that word. Use the word develop. It's fine. You can develop your skills. Um, so uh, definitely uh, too much information. Again, remember your audience. And um, trying to just being too wordy overall. It's a very limited space. Um, you should choose your words carefully. So what makes it a good personal statement good? Uh, it tells the reader something that you are passionate about. It tells a story. And the, the story is an important element for many reasons. One, the reader is going to be reading your application along with probably about 20 others in the same day. They never just read one application at a time. Um, so telling a story helps them stay focused. Uh, they want to know where, the, where it's going. So I think that the, the storytelling is a, a good thing. So here's an example. Let's say that you are a problem solver and you see yourself as a problem solver. You don't write a personal statement saying, I'm a problem solver. You would write a personal statement that tells a story about a time that you uh, a tackled a really complex problem and how you how you solved it. Um, and so that tells the reader that you are a problem solver without using those words. Um, it leaves the reader with a positive feeling about adding you to the class. So at the end of reading a personal statement, I would always say, oh, I like this person. I would really want to want them to be a part of the class. Um, and it doesn't have to be about all accomplishments. It can be about failures. Um, learning from mistakes is a category of, of personal statements that uh, works really well under the right set of circumstances. I think the mistake can't be too um, terrible. <laughs> you aren't going to forever be known as, you know, the person who accidentally killed the puppy. Um, so maybe not write about that if, you, if that's your mistake. But other mistakes, like mistakes that you've made at work and learned from, um, those moments of growth, those moments that show maturity, are important and can work really well uh, as a personal statement. So three elements uh, that are really important to personal statements is be compelling. So that goes back to uh, you know finding a topic that you're passionate about, that you understand, that you know, uh, and that you really uh, can appreciate. Uh, be professional. Remember, you're applying to an academic program. Um, this is important to, to be professional at all times. It doesn't mean that you can't let your personality show through. Uh, if you are funny by nature, then by all means, your personal statement can show your personality. If, if you're not, this may not be the time to try humor, um, but it is something to, to make sure that it reflects your personality. And leaving the reader with a fond impression of you, and that goes back to the tone, it needs to make sure that um, the tone is, is appropriate. Um, so a couple of tips, show, don't tell, that's, you know, like the, the example I gave about the problem solving, don't just say, I'm a problem solver, tell a story about it. Um, there's no real need to customize for each school. I think for most people that I talk to about personal statements, you don't need to say at the end, you know, and that is why I want to go to this school, um, you know, as somebody who read files. 12 years at Harvard Law School, I read plenty of personal statements that, uh, you know, said that this is why I want to go to NYU, or this is why I want to go to Columbia. Um, it just, if you, if you customize it too much and it's really just a, a, a word that you change with every personal statement, it just creates room for error and it looks plugged in. Now, that, that doesn't mean that if there is a real reason why this tool is um, a place where you want to be. That might even be a separate essay. And I think a lot of schools do encourage you to do, you know, a why Chicago can, for example, or a why essay for this school. Um, and, and that makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't need to be in the personal statement necessarily. Um, so you don't have to worry about that, changing that. You can always supplement with other things. I think a good a personal statement is not the place to explain bad grades or test scores. You can do that in an addendum. Um, the personal statement is really a place where you want to show um, the positive attributes about yourself 
Uh, and then you can talk about a reason why a test score or a bad semester happened uh, in a separate piece. Uh, remember that a stranger will be reading this. Tone matters, tell a story, and let your personality show through. I think I covered all of those. Um, so those, that's the, the, basic, uh, the, the basic overview of personal statements. But we wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, we have our blog, Spivey Consulting. Um, we have a lot of resources available on our blog and, and our Twitter. Um, and I know that, uh, that Chicago Kent also has a lot of resources available as well. Yeah, so at this point, we'd like to open, up, open it up for your questions. Uh, there is a questions box in the webinar software where you can type in questions, and Karen and I are happy to answer those for you. Maybe to kick it off while we wait for some of the questions to come in, um, do you have any maybe general uh, guidelines on how long personal statements should be? So I think a personal statement should be, um, I think a lot of schools will say two pages. Um, I think sticking to the guidelines is, uh, but that the school requires is a good idea. And I think you can say a lot in two pages. It is, um, uh, it, it, it gives you a limited space, but you can tell, you can probably go over a few of uh, qualities that you have that you can uh, tell a story about. Okay. in that amount of time. All right, so another uh, next question is, may a personal statement double as a diversity statement? Oh, it's a great question. So uh, diversity statements are often uh, vaguely worded <laughs> prompts in law school admissions applications. Um, the way I see a diversity statement is that a diversity statement is a way in which you can tell uh, the school that you can bring a non-majority viewpoint to uh, to the classroom and the community. If your personal statement covers that, you don't really need anything extra. Um, a diversity statement is truly, truly optional. There is no penalty for not having a personal statement. Um, so if you are, if you want to talk a little bit about what this perspective is and the, give, give the reader a little background, you absolutely can do that as part of the personal statement. But if there's another topic that you'd rather talk about as, a, as, a, as part of the personal statement, the diversity statement gives you the option to show another dimension. Um, and while we're on the topic of diversity statements, I think a lot of people are confused about when they should write it. Um, like I said, it is very, it is truly optional. You don't have to write one. Um, the, I think a lot of people think of them as, you know, race, race and ethnicity. If it's a non-majority race or ethnicity, that's how you can use it. But it extends well beyond that. Um, it could be any, uh, and the, my description of it is a non-majority viewpoint. So uh, it could be socioeconomic status, you know, if you came from a disadvantaged background or an underrepresented religion, or um, you know, certainly race and ethnicity, or something where you had an unusual upbringing, or LGBT status, or military sometimes. Um, I think there are a lot of categories that fit into a diversity statement, but I've heard the advice from, from, uh, from some people that it's an opportunity to, to come up with something. And I can tell you that it's not. <laughs> if you're having a hard time coming up with a topic for a diversity statement, then you probably shouldn't write one. And that's okay, because it's, 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 it's really, truly optional, I promise. It's not gonna hurt your application if you don't have one. Um, but it does give some people the opportunity to show a different dimension, how they can bring a non-majority viewpoint to the classroom. Because I think we all know that we learn as much from our classmates in law school as we do from professors. And so it's important to have different viewpoints and backgrounds in law school, and that's why it's important. Great. And how about, uh, next question is, how would you advise a veteran to incorporate military service into their personal statement? Yeah, so I've worked with a, a lot of veterans. Um, and. Uh, uh, they usually have great material for personal statements. Um, so what I would do is to think of, to brainstorm some topics and to think about the characteristics that you might have uh, that can be demonstrated in the story. And that can be leadership, teamwork, um, you know, taking charge. 
uh, always wanting to help people, you know, if you have a characteristic that is always wanting to be a part of the helpers, um, then tell a story that, you know, that tells the reader uh, why you came to this point and why it's important to you. And when you're brainstorming topics or thinking about, uh, you know, stories that you can tell, I always think of don't worry about how long ago it was. Um, if it's still relevant today, if the lesson learned or the, the takeaway from the story is still relevant today, then it still works. So, you know, think about those, those stories and if it still evokes an emotion, then it's probably uh, still relevant today. Um, so I think, you know, personal statement, it's going to be obvious from the resume, but it's more than just what you did. It's how you got to where you are and what you've learned along the way and what you can bring to the classroom community. Okay, next question. Do you recommend connecting the overall experience covered in the narrative of the personal statement to your desire to attend law school? So I think it makes sense for some, in most cases, it so much depends on what the substance of the, the, um, of the personal statement is. But I do think that that makes sense. It doesn't have to be much. Um, you know, like I said, the, the why law journey doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, when I was seven, my mom told me I should be a lawyer because I was always arguing. Um, I think we've all read that right. many, many times. <laughs> um, so, um, but it can be, you know, a story about like the, the problem solving example. I think the problem solving is something that I go to all the time because it's really what lawyers do. Um, and a lot of people who are attracted to law school and can't articulate it are, are attracted to it because they like to solve problems. And, you know, if you're going through a story about a time where you solve the problem, then it does make sense to tie that into law school. So it needs to make sense as part of the whole application, but I do think a forward-looking ending um, in a direct, you know, you're, you're telling the story of your journey. Um, we want to know where you're going. And so it does make sense to flow into kind of why law school at the end. Good. And then uh, another question was, um, so what do you think if the, if the story for the personal statement is about how different the applicant is? So I'm not sure I understand the question. Like if, if the personal statement is about how different the, the applicant is, is a, sort of as a topic. I think, yes. yeah, so I would, I would caution the writer to make sure it's, it's presented in a way that lets the reader come to that conclusion. Um, so it's not presented as, you know, I'm different because X, Y, and Z, but more tell some reasons why uh, you're, you, you are different. I, I'm not sure that I'm really grasping the, the question. Okay. Is that, do you think that's what it is, Nicole? Yeah, I think that, I think that makes sense. Uh, next question. Uh, if one school wants a two to three page statement, but another school says they want a 500 word statement, yeah. how do you do it without losing content or losing probably the key point parts yeah. of your message? That's tough. Um, yeah, there are a couple of schools that have 500 word uh, limits, which I think is uh, it's short. In comparison, because a two-page, you know, can run from depending on what kind of font you use, is you know, 750 to 850 words. Um, so you do have to cut out a lot, and I think it um, it just takes editing, and it's going to you know, going back and saying, okay, what am I trying to say by these three sentences? How can I say that in a more concise way? And it can be done. It really can be do, be done, and I think it's uh, it just takes a little bit of patience and time. And I think one of the things what, that's helpful in editing a personal statement is to walk away from it for a few days, because I think people sit down and they they ha they block out time to write it, and they want to get it done and want to get it done. Um, but if you take a day or two away from it and then go back to it, you'll go, you'll be able to see it with fresh eyes. Um, and you can always have somebody else read it. Uh, you know, have a friend read it, make sure that it makes sense, or have a parent sometimes, um, or, uh, you know, a, a friend from work or uh, from school. I think that that might be helpful to get some feedback on it. 
because it can be done, even though it is, it's not easy, but it can be done. All right, next question is, do you believe we should stay away from controversial topics, even if we're passionate about them? That's a good question. I have this conversation a lot. Um, I think as long as the, the controversial topic isn't harmful to anybody else, uh, you are allowed to have an opinion. And it is, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example because it's, it's fine. I mean, uh, so my, um, when I was at Harvard, I would read personal statements that I disagreed with, like in terms of their uh, position on, on uh, a, an item or a topic or whatever. It's not something that I personally would, would do, but that mattered less to me than the rest of the application. So, and, and it is important to have people with different viewpoints. And it depends on how it comes across. So I think that would, there's, you know, a number of different things that, that could come into play there. But as long as it's not harmful or disrespectful to the opposing side, then it makes all, it, it's fine. If it's, especially if it's something that you're passionate about. If it's something that you're, you know, you have a, a loosely held opinion, then I wouldn't do it just to be uh, a contrarian. But I think that if it is something that you're passionate about and it's, it's, it's something that you plan on working on um, and you can have a reasonable conversation or present it in a reasonable way that's not disrespectful, then that makes, um, that, that's, it, it is fine to do that because it is important to have people who disagree with you in the classroom. Um, it's, it's how you learn. Um, so I don't think it's something necessarily to shy away from as long as it isn't going to be, you know, something that's going to raise a red flag in terms of being disrespectful or, um, or harmful to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And how should an international student approach a personal statement? And are specific references to the student's own country okay? Okay. So I think, um, you know, the JD is a degree to practice law, you know, in the U.S. in general, although it is helpful to have and then return to a home country um, often. So I think there, there should be some um, indication of, of your, reason, your rationale for wanting to pursue a law degree in this country. Um, you know, if you did your undergraduate work in the U.S., then that makes sense a little bit more. Or if you've never, you know, come to the U.S. before this, then it might make sense to address it. Otherwise, the rules are the same. Um, again, you're, you're being evaluated on the same criteria um, that anybody else is. It's just you add a different element, which is great because you add a different perspective um, to the, the classroom, and that's going to be a good thing. But it does make sense to kind of answer any unanswered questions about why you're going to law school. Same thing I would, I would say for somebody who's in a career change from something completely unrelated. Um, you want to make sure that you don't raise any questions about why you want to go to law school. Incidentally, I will say that, you know, in my 15 years of reading applications, I really only had that question a handful of times. Um, why does this person want to go to law school? Like it very rarely came up. Uh, so if you're concerned about it, in general, you don't have to be, <laughs> but you should make, your application should make sense as a whole. Okay. And how much of an impact does the, per, does the personal statement have in the application process? It's a great, it's a great question because everyone wants it to be a weighted process. So first and foremost, you are going, but it's not in most cases, so I can't give you a formula. Um, and it really is going to depend on school to school. But in general, you are, you're being evaluated for an academic program. So, you know, the LSAT and GPA are going to give the, the reader um, a very good indication of your potential for success in law school based on those numbers. So you're starting out with kind of, is this person going to be an academic risk or not? And so there are, then there are other elements that go into it. But if you get to the personal statement and it's, it's a, a word salad, then even if you aren't an academic risk, if your numbers are high, the reader will be like, what? What's going on here? Or if your personal statement reveals some, you know, terrible writing habits or um, you're just kind of a downer, 
um, then it can affect you in that way. On the flip side, somebody who's borderline, um, who is, you know, incredible story to tell, can add so much to the classroom, is not an academic risk, you know, um, or is a borderline, let's just see, the personal statement does have a, a major pull in, in the admissions process. So it is, again, something that is just part of the application as a whole. And I, I, every school that I've worked at, and most admissions officers, say that it's, it is a, a comprehensive evaluation. It is obviously, you know, the academic side of it, but everything else combined. Uh, and, and law schools are concerned about how you're going to do in the classroom, and they're also paying attention to, um, you know, post-law school. Are you going to be an active member of, of you know, the, the community? Are you going to be employable on the other end? Um, you know, those are all factors that are taken into consideration. So I can't, while I can't assign a number value to it, it is an incredibly important part of the application process. All right, and we are right at the end of our time, but why don't we take, we'll do one more question before we close, and I realize we have a lot of questions that have not yet been answered, uh, so we will try to get answers to those for everyone offline. Um, but let's close with, uh, does it make sense to write multiple personal statements for different schools, even if it's not prompted by a school's requirements? I don't think it does. I think it makes sense to have one element about you that you want to say, that you want the admissions committee to hear. Um, you do want, some, you have an idea of what you want to say to the admissions committee and you want, um, what is it that you want to get across to them? So it should be one of those elements that is talked about in the personal statement. I could say that the, the same theme being different lengths <laughs> depending on the requirements, but in general, I don't recommend gearing a personal statement towards a school um, unless there's a very specific reason for doing that um, based on a, a program that they have and you want to talk a little bit about that in your personal statement. But in general, I would say no, you don't need more than one personal statement um, for multiple schools. Great. And we did have a request for you to um, provide the blog link again. For this, I, oh. I can we. I don't know how to go back. Sorry, yeah. that's all right. Let's see if I can get it. It's just spiveyconsulting.com and then blog. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. So spiveyconsulting.com slash blog. Yeah. And then I want to let everyone know, too, we do have some upcoming events. Um, our next on-campus event is Saturday, November 4th. And then our next webinar is an um, information session for the JD program at Chicago Kent. And that is um, on Wednesday, December 6th. And so you'll be getting invitations to those. So thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. And thank you, Karen, for presenting and sharing your wisdom about personal statements. We appreciate everyone attending. Thank you. Thank you.